EBSCOF has reached a contract agreement. I'm Kenneth Moore. And I'm Melissa Cerenzioni. We'll have more on the contract agreement along with your weather forecast coming up on WSRU News. WSRU News. Starring Alyssa Cerincioni, Kenneth Moore, Peter Moran, Meteorologist Ryan Noblet. Now here's Alyssa Cerincioni and Kenneth Moore with your rock solid coverage. The Association of Pennsylvania State College and University Faculty reached an agreement on March 20th after 21 months of negotiation. Faculty contracts include pay increases of 1% between 2012 to 2014 and 2% 2 in 2014 to 2015. Coaches salary increased 2.5% in 2012 to 2013 and 2.25% in 2013 to 2014. Upscuff plans to renegotiate the contract before it expires. Former Penn State University coach Jerry Sandusky spoke to reporters for the first time since its sentencing. Sandusky, who was serving at least 30 years in prison and is on his conviction of 45 counts of child sex abuse, told a reporter that he was merely fooling around. Former assistant coach Mike McQuarrie testified that he saw the sexual abuse take place. Sandusky believes that McQuarrie misrepresented his behaviors. He is appealing the conviction and continues to deny any wrongdoing. Ohio attorney Mike Moser filed a lawsuit against Punxsutawney Phil for lying about the coming of spring. Moser claims Phil is guilty of a felony charge of misrepresentation of spring against the people of Ohio. Hula master Michael Peely Pang came to SRU from Hawaii during the week of March 11th through the 15th. Pang taught 20 dance majors the art of ancient hula dancing called hula kahiko, as well as Hawaiian customs and culture. <laughs> So aloha, my name is Michael Pili Pang. Uh, I'm from Hawaii and I'm here on a uh, one week residency uh, as a guest of the Slippery Rock Dance Department. And I'm really honored to be able to share with you some of our aloha, some of our warmth from our islands during these winter months. Um, here, I'm here sharing with them a dance. I actually have the opportunity to mount a dance piece on the dance program. I think this is a very different form of dance. Hula has not only movement, but has a lot of cultural integrity involved in it. So while the children, while the kids are learning dance and how to dance this dance, this piece I'm sharing with them, they're also learning about cultural concepts, simple concepts of aloha, mahalo, kuleana, what is your responsibility, lao lima, if you don't work with the team, you're off-centered, everything that involves these concepts. Also the fact that um, it's a great opportunity for me to mount something on the dance instead of just a workshop where I come in really quickly, show them how to move and move on. In this particular time, I'm able to share with them a dance piece. Uh, I've been really fortunate. I've been working with Slippery Rock and the dance department since 1997, off and on, uh, quite a while. Um, and in each time I've come up, I've only been able to just do workshops. This one opportunity of one whole week to get the dancers is what we call pakana. We're able to touch the dancers, not just physically, but emotionally get them involved into the dance so that it doesn't come out and look um, fake. It comes out and looks like they really know what they're doing and sharing the culture back and forth. Sophomore emerging technology major Jamie Chalmers started Slippery Rocks Film Society last fall semester. The new club started filming their own short films. We're a student organization and our plan is to hopefully make some short films, enter them into some film competitions. That'd be cool because we don't have any funding from SGA, so that'd be a good way to get money to actually do something. But every week we spend uh, we spend the meeting just talking about like our favorite films. So, uh, we alternate weeks where we'll watch a movie or we'll talk about a movie we're going to make. Currently right now, we're making our first short film, so hopefully that works out for us. 
The Film Society's meetings are Thursdays at 8 o'clock in the evening in room 324 in the Robert Smith Student Center and are planning a field trip on April 5th to a film festival at Carnegie Mellon. If you're interested in joining the club, attend any meeting or contact Jamie at jac1250 at sru.edu. SRU proves recycling myth is busted. According to the SGA annual survey last year, some students commented that recycling does not exist on campus. A special assistant to the president, Paul Scanlon, said that students were seeing the maintenance workers throw blue bags into what students thought were regular trash dumpsters. However, workers were taking those bags to recycling. SRU bought some of the company logos for the dumpsters to avoid any confusion. The SRU baseball team split its doubleheader on Monday with West Liberty. We'll have more details on this along with your local weather report coming up after the break. Watch Red Times! We do revolution the computer graphics! If you're not watching Red Times, you might as well be watching a birdhouse. See you later, bye! Why don't you watch the red times right now? It's on. It's probably on. I don't know. What time is it, Kevin? It goes, it goes, it goes, it goes, it goes. Spooky there! The shadows barrage of witch tongue, cobra spit over apocalyptic cult, kill a god with smoke, stop music, seriously! It goes, it goes. This week in your SGA update, the toga and distance parties debate against each other in the ballroom of the student center. Motil starts by introducing hopes to improve funding for the graduate students, who would also like to improve sustainability on campus and further green initiatives. He suggests that campus should create a new Greek sign to help represent this. He also states that upon changing the scheduling process, no one will lose their privileges. Next, Clement states that since he's an environmental geoscience major, he would like to also improve the sustainability and green campus. Clements also mentions that he would like to improve the students' views of the SGA. I'm Peter Moran, and this was your SGA Update. Have a great day. The SRU Winter Guard is a new organization on campus this year. They perform their debut show in the Marl Fieldhouse on March 26th during Common Hour. Their show is titled Candide, which reflects a celebration of friendship, laughter, and love of performance. Their instructor, Bruno Zucala, says a blend of emotion and excellence was demonstrated by these students during their per debut performance. The SRU Winter Guard will perform their show one last time at Trewa Championships at Hempfield High School on April 6th. Captain Amber St. Clair says it is a great feeling to be a part of the SRU Winter Guard. The thrill of performing in the first Winter Guard at the university is exhilarating. Feminist activist Ellen Bravo discussed women's issues in the ATS Auditorium on March 26th. Bravo discussed a lecture on real stories from the war on women. She is an active member for the Women's Studies Program, the President's Commission on the Status of Women, the School of Business, and the SRU Women's Center. The SRU Office of Career Education and Development sponsored the event. My name is Tony Cardamone, and I am a senior safety management major. I'm actually a recipient of the Pittsburgh Promise, and that transferred over to here very nicely. I am a first-generation student. My mother was a nurse, and my father was a concrete finisher. I know a lot of different safety programs are technical-based. Ours focuses on more management, and that's what a lot of companies are looking for nowadays. All of my professors are great. They've inspired me in many ways individually. Uh, Dr. Cali, he's, he's one of the best department chairs I'd have to say on campus. Dr. Mahalik, Mr. Sherwin, uh, Dr. Bernardo, Mr. Culligan, they all bring a different aspect of safety management to the table. I did my internship with Walsh Construction and it was actually set up through campus which was very nice. That's another good thing about my major. They, they bring all these different companies to come interview us. I chose SRU because I really love the campus. It's just nice feel, good size, uh, only 8,500 kids, so it was big enough that I felt like I was in a big school, but it was small enough to keep it kind of close-knit. My future plans, um, I actually just accepted a position, and hopefully I'll either be in Boston, Jersey, or Louisville, and I have to thank SRU for that because they're one of the, they brought that company to interview me and I really did enjoy coming to SRU and I loved that I came here. Slippery Rock University celebrated its 124th birthday on Tuesday, March 26th. 
to help SRU Founders Day, the Green and White Society sponsored a party in the Smith Student Center. The Slipper Rock Musical Society performs cabaret on March 27th and March 28th. Reporter Sam Passarello is on the scene with the coverage. Hello, I'm Samantha Passarello and I'm here with Kaylee who just finished performing in the cabaret this evening. So how do you think the cabaret went? It went great. I'm very excited about how it went tonight. How long have you been rehearsing for? We've been rehearsing since the middle of February, I believe, so about a month. What does it take to put together a cabaret? Um, lots of practice. <laughs> um, but basically we start out with musical rehearsals and we start putting, um, learning words, learning music, and then once we, once we know all that we put it on its feet and add walking and movement and all that fun stuff. Well, thank you. It looked really great tonight. Thank and, you. Uh, thank you again, Kaylee. Now back to you, WSRU. The Slippery Rock University baseball team split a double header on Monday with West Liberty, including a 12-0 victory and 6-3 loss. The Rock currently holds a 19-8 record this season after also winning both games in a double header against Clarion on Thursday. The Slippery Rock women's lacrosse team defeated Shepherd University in a 13-12 nail-biter Thursday night at Mahalik. Thompson Stadium. The Rock also fell to 11th rank Lock Haven Saturday afternoon 6-1 in the Lax for Life game. Slippery Rock currently holds a 2-for-3 record going into conference play. Now to Ryan Noblet for your weekly weather report. Tuesday we have a 20% chance of snow, but if that snow does not appear we should have a pretty good day overall despite the high of 35 degrees. Overnight on Tuesday, the temperatures will drop to 23 degrees, but Wednesday looks very promising with mostly sunny skies and a high of 38 degrees, just two degrees off that coveted 40 degree mark. After another night of 23 degree weather, spring appears to be in full swing for Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, where we'll see all three days a high of 51 degrees with varying levels of clouds and sun. Lows will move from the low 30s to the upper 30s throughout the weekend, with the lows reaching 39 degrees on Saturday. There's a chance to shower Saturday night, but Saturday is my pick of the week, as we should have mostly sunny skies as compared to Thursday and Friday, where we'll have a little bit of clouds. Sunday and Monday, the highs will be even higher, topping out at 57 and 54 degrees respectively, despite that chance of showers both days. 40% chance doesn't look that major. Thank you, Ryan. That concludes our report for this week. Thanks for joining us here on WSRU News. I'm Alyssa Cerincioni. And I'm Kenneth Moore. Have a great day, Slippery Rock.